Hello and welcome to this instalment of Talking Trim. I'm Jonathan Skinner and today we are looking at some fully trimmed front seats for the Triumph TR4A. TR4A was also known as the TR4 IRS, independent rear suspension, uh, but this was the sort of mid 60s version of the Triumphs and these are the seats from them. It's worth bearing in mind that the seat frames for these were identical to the last version of the TR4 seats, the uh, car before the TR4A. Um, TR4A, sorry, TR4s, rather had three different types of seats covers uh, over the course of two different frames. So the very last version, which is the tubular frame with the square back panel on it, uh, that framework is identical to this TR4A framework here. So the only thing that would change would be the foams and the seat covers, but effectively interchangeable. As for anything like this, if you're unsure, just drop me some photos with your seat frames and we can identify them for you. So let's dive on in. Uh, our customer has sent us his seat frames and we have replaced everything. So we've done the webbings, the diaphragm. So the webbings, obviously the bits that go on the backrest and add as a spring. Uh, the diaphragms are the rubber pieces that go underneath the cushion base that act also as a spring. Um, and then you've got the seat foams, obviously, and then the seat covers. Uh, these have been done in the black-white combo, which is very common for this era of car. Um, white piping on the outside only. The inside piping always match the main trim. We can contrast it if you prefer, but um, originally it wasn't. And generally speaking, we uh, advise keeping to that spec. Um, originally, they would have left the factory, a lot of them vinyl ambler, and then they would have done a few leather versions. Now, when it says leather, it means leather faced. That means that basically the bits that touch your body when you're sat in the seat are leather, but the backs and surrounds are vinyl. So. This horseshoe here, pleated panel, pleated panel and horseshoe, they would all be leather. But then things like this surround down here, the surround here, as well as the back panel here, would all be vinyl. Uh, that's what we refer to as leather faced. Um, in the industry out there, aftermarket industry, it's often referred to as leather. So just bear that in mind. Not to be confused with full leather, which is what these seats are. Full leather means that there is no vinyl on there whatsoever. So even these surrounds here, back panel here, even the retainers that aren't seen, when everything's dead and done, the retainer would be down here. The cushion has a little loop zone in it for the spring that goes across. Um, they are all leather in this kit here. Uh, so that's what we refer to as full leather. Just bear in mind, the only thing that isn't leather is the piping, which is always leather cloth where uh, material allows for it um, on that. So bear that in mind. So like I say, full leather these, and this has been done in a smooth finished leather. So not much of a texture to it whatsoever. We can also offer grained and vomal. Uh, see our website for more details on that. Um, but yeah, like I say, this is a nicely set, uh, done set of seats. Pleats all lining up, which is the crucial thing. Nicely padded out around those horseshoes to give it nice definition. Um, as with other trimmed items that you'll see on my YouTube channel, we've done this as a bit of a benchmark, basically. This is the kind of benchmark that you should be looking to achieve with your seats, whether it's yourself as a hobbyist or your professional trimmer. These are the results, or at least the minimum results that they should be looking to achieve. And if they're not, then you need to be uh, contacting us to get advice on how to best achieve that result here. Um, in terms of our manufacturer of bits and bobs uh everything material wise is cut on this cnc machine that i've stood on including our leather so in terms of our cutting and sewing process which is a notch to notch sew process uh everything is as consistent as it possibly could be so very hard for us to make mistakes during production not saying it doesn't happen but very very rarely and thus um eliminates a lot of the issues that you might have got years back with inconsistent marking and cutting out which might have caused issues in the fitment uh, process uh, so if your trimmer or yourself is head scratching about the fitment of these items come to contact us because we know exactly what needs to be done in certain instances and as you can see here this is exactly how they should turn out a few things to note on the tr4a frames and covers they are handed the cushion bases are not they are universal but the backrests are this one here as we look is actually the right hand as you're sat in the car and this is the left hand so effectively imagine you're sat forward 
we've got the right hand and the left hand and they are handed down to the framework but the covers themselves are handed you'll see it's much narrower on the horseshoe here on the outside than it is on the inside same again on this left hand one here it's uh narrower on the outside and that's to allow the hood frame to pass by without scuffing the seats it's a very common theme on tr4s tr6 seats that's uh it does affect this back panel here so this is a hardboard panel which is then trimmed and attached on uh, so that is also handed there. Uh, it's pretty obvious from when you lay the covers out, but uh, which is right and which is left based on my description there on the narrower horseshoe. But if you're unsure, look for little triangles cut out in the bottom of the horseshoes and the bottom of the panels. That is our way of indicating internally which is right hand seat. So the triangle means it's right hand seat. If there's no triangle, it's a left hand seat or not specified as in universal. So just bear that in mind. Um, so like I said, this back panel here, Hardboard panel introduced on the TR4s, carried on through the TR4As, TR5s they dropped it, then it was reintroduced for the TR6 models um, up until the very last version of the TR6 models. Now, something to bear in mind on this, the fixings used on the pro uh, predominant areas left and right are just the main uh, trim panel clips that you use for a lot of your door panels and things like that. However, there are some fixings up here, which are like this, rather unique. And unfortunately, I don't think anyone makes them anymore. So it can cause a bit of an issue. Uh, as with these seats here, we were only supplied with one and I think you need at least four of them. I think that makes sense, yeah, four, because we have little cutouts just on the hardboard up here for them, two of them, I think. So yeah, I'm sure it's a two per seat. Uh, but yeah, there's, they're not made anymore. So what we actually did was, and I've, I've taken some photos and I will be doing a blog post on it in due course, is we actually drilled a couple of new holes into the frame, roughly the same position, and then into the hardboard that allow it to use the same trim panel fixing clips as down the side there. So it's a really good fix on those because you see, unfortunately, a lot of people aren't really sure what to do and they try and either ignore the fixing or they use an unsuitable fixing in the same slot hole and you get a lot of seats that have sort of, I can't do it because ours is tight, but a lot of bagginess there on where the uh, hardboard ties in. So just bear that in mind, it's worth altering your frames and hardboard to suit if you haven't got the clips. Very easy fix, really not particularly complicated. So if you want to do that, uh, do get in touch and I'll at least send you the photos if I haven't done the blog post. But yeah, uh, I think that's about covered it. Um, yeah, as I mentioned, the cushion retainers have a loop sewn into the back of them, which is for the spring that goes down the left to right on those which was a common theme again on i believe the tr4 lates and the tr4 a's and up until the early tr6s if memory serves correctly so we did the loop on there which i know a couple of other manufacturers out there don't bother doing um but yeah so great result there uh i think i've covered my bases either way lovely set of seats if you want us to just make your seat covers and the hardware items and you can trim them up, not a problem at all. Obviously, if you prefer us to do the job from start to finish so you get results like this, then please do contact us. Um, yeah, please remember to make any comments uh, below and remember to like, subscribe and share with other classic car enthusiasts out there. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.